thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I consider your invitation to be a great honor. I appreciate your willingness to hear from a Christian theologian. The friendships that have developed through our conversations are relationships that I will always My concerns understanding Genesis 1 and 2 from an older perspective. Let me begin by defining with creation. Older creationism is the view that the God of the Bible created the science demonstrates to be billions of years old. There are times in history in which God's activity is detectable. Protect in the creation of humanity through an original so, creationism, I'm going to present Old Earth creationism from a Christian perspective of an interpretation of Genesis 1. The Bible presents God as who is on mission. <clears throat> this mission begins in Genesis 1, where God inaugurates the universe to be in Genesis 2, God assigns humanity the task of joining in his mission. When the Bible is God in action, it always does so in an accommodating, analogous language. As you will see, it is logically essential that we interpret the days of creation in Genesis 1 non-literal, non-24-hour terms. So, the point I'm making, or, or trying to make, is that I believe only 7,000 years old based on literal interpretation and I put a literal quote they have never interpreted in the so-called literal method advocated by young earth let me just say a uh, point uh, uh, there are certain creationists to hold to creation one is only 10,000 years old or less. The creationist movement in America not respond at this time to the argument. Present one on the mission is established as his kingdom. The rest of the Bible. It serves as the introduction to the rest of the scripture and as such is the beginning of the biblical story. And what is this beginning? Well, the Bible presents the universe as God's temple. And this imagery is found throughout the Bible from the end, from Genesis to Revelation. So the days of Genesis 1 are the account of establishing his kingdom in not the world at his temple. So, Genesis 1 prints God in his temple in six days or six episodes. So first, in Genesis 1, God creates the earth as in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth teaches that God created without use of any materials without any opposition and mere of his word. Now this is very important. This is really different from all other ancient creation stories from the surrounding area that was pagans, Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Canaanites, the all had creation stories. But all stories were filled with prayer, conflict, and opposition. The creator deity in those stories was not transcendent. He was not sovereign. Nor was he necessarily Moses letting us know that the God of the Bible is fundamental from the pagan gods to the surrounding cultures. One, God the heavens and the earth. But verse 2 then says that the earth was without form and was void. In other words, unformed 
unfilled, it was disorder. Disorder is not to be understood as evil or demonic, but it was untamed and unruly. To understand the disorder of the original creation. I think a would be it would be like a room of but they're not organized either. So the notion unfolded and unfolded by the biological framework next uh, 20 verses of uh, the six days of the creation. And that's the third. From verse 30 through 31, God establishes the world as his common temple in fills and form that which he has created. In the first days, God forms the world. In the last three days, God fills the world. Days one, two, and three form the water, the sky, and the land. In days four, five, and six, God fills the water, sky, and land. And then he establishes order over that which he has created because it says and God, this separation process, God separates, divides the day from the night, the waters and the land, fish from the fowl. God advances his kingdom by establishing order. And then the next thing most important to us is that God establishes his sovereignty over that which he has created. Because I then say, and then. Calling, naming, named what he created, God gave it to step his authority over it. And he calls the light day, and then he calls the darkness night. God establishing his divine authority. This process of naming, establishing of God and temple, we will see this again in two. God calls upon Adam to name animals. And by Adam naming the animals, Adam is establishing his authority, our human authority, over the animals of the earth. Next, we see uh, the Bible presents God's actions in exalted prose, a sophisticated presentation. So it's going to use the repetition of certain phrases to emphasize the majesty and wisdom of God as the emphasis is on God thoughts using key expressions. Moses uses these phrases over and over in order to point. The formula is announcement, command, report, and then evaluation. Announcement each day begins with and said by God and drive the narrative. And then the second is the commandment. Let there be or equivalent for God to speak is for God to act. Are this is the report that we read. And it would say, and so God made equivalent. And Moses is teaching us exist God's express will, purpose, and word. And then the evaluation Fourth, God saw that it was good. As creation satisfies purposes, it has value. Along with God's evaluation, His blessing. So, <clears throat> the Bible distinguishes between God's creative episodes by calling them days. Now, since there theological reasons for understanding the day, briefly list some ex- reasons for doing the seven days in other 24 hour periods. First, the day Yom, or day, is used in at least three different ways in Genesis. In chapter 1 and verse 4, God calls the light day, referring to day to In chapter 2 and verse 4, Moses uses the day, referring to the infinite period. And then the third, at of each of the seven creative uh, 
it is in, it does in 24 hour periods. The second reason is because of the ordination of the sun and the moon. The fourth day is verses 14 and 19 of chapter 1. We're not given the task. Day, hours, weeks, and months of the fourth day. Required that at least the first three days are not literal 24 days. And then we see the refrain that's repeated evening and morning. It does not refer to 24 hours. The refrain is not even the daytime. Rather, the refrain refers to nighttime. Here we of God resting. And I'll explain this further. After working all day, as I will explain the imagery that we should not interpret this literally. And then the fourth day, the seventh day has not ended. According to John Gospel, chapter 5, and verse 3, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3, God is going this means that the seventh day has lasted for five years. And therefore, can refer to a literal day. And then humanity is the crowning in verses 6 and 7 of chapter 1. On this day, it does something really unique. It makes beings that can reflect God's nature. The text says, are in image. Make in our image at our likeness. Men and women are given authority. We have dominion. It says, humanity is given the task of managing God's creation on earth. And then man and woman have a man. God says to them, be fruitful. Adam and Eve commissioned uh, to expand the of Eden so that the blessing of God's kingdom stands in the entire world. The commission is made more explicit in a sister to That brings up my point and where I want to focus my talk for the remainder of my time. And I'm paying attention to the time that I have. Third point. Interpret the day of Genesis 1 on literally. The doctrine of God requires Days of Genesis 1 as in language. I spoke on a university campus in which I presented an old interpretation of Genesis 1 and 2. I ask, why shouldn't we believe that Genesis 1 is referring to six four hour days? Should we interpret the Bible? I answer that typically, unless the biblical text under consideration itself gives us to provide us not us good reasons for in turn the six days is longer than days. the Bible almost always presents God's action in this language it is a crucial point that needs to be explained further I mean teaches that God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipotent. What is the definition of omnipotent? That means that God is all powerful. Of omnipotent of omnipotent is that God is everywhere present. So the Bible also presents God in anthropomorphic, accommodated, and an analogous matter. When God presents God or the scripture God acted language. This is clearly Genesis especially in the creation account of Genesis two. An analogy. Well the definition of a morphism is that God in the Bible is sometimes described in human terms so that we may understand what he is doing. Sometimes the Bible presents God deciding or changing his mind. Or the 
condition of accommodation were provide revelation terms that the original audience could understand. This is an accommodation. It is not an accommodation to error because the Bible is an error uh, is inherent in it at all. And then the definition of analogy. God reveals himself similarities. The Bible describes God as our rock, our shield, our fortress. These are analogies. Not made of stone or metal. God is spirit. Well, here are some examples of anthropomorphism, accommodation, and analogy in Genesis writings of Moses concerning creation. For example, when God brought the animals to God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Remember, God is all-knowing. A literal interpretation would imply that God didn't know what names Adam was going to be the animal. Therefore, do not. Christians have no this verse. For example, it about Sodom and Gomorrah. And it says in 19, God said, because the outcry of Gomorrah is great and their sin is very great, I will go down to see whether they all according to the outcome to me, I will know. Now remember, he is present everywhere. Interpretation would imply that not only did God know what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah, but that he was from those cities. Therefore, Christians have not interpreted these literally. Or again, when it refreshed the seventh day, Exodus will be the sign forever because people of Israel that in six days heaven and on the sixth day was refreshed. Young earth creationist brethren want to say that this verse teaches that God created this literal day. But because remember God is all powerful. God is never fatigued. He is never tired. The expression refresh means a literal interpretation by the tired and to regain. Therefore, a literal interpretation is not acceptable. God's activity during the seven days of Genesis 1 and the human work week have many similarities, many differences. God only worked one week, worked many weeks. If activity, we use, we using pre existing materials. God created out of nothing. Moses makes an analogy of Exodus. In, but the it was nothing that God created in a literal So, how we have seen that, that the Bible presents God as on mission. This mission begins in Genesis where God inaugurates to be his temple. God's actions are presented as seven or seven episodes. In Genesis chapter 2, God assigned joining in, but it is managed that fails miserably. The remainder of the Bible is the act of God completing his mission, redeeming humanity in the process. The New Testament repeatedly refers to Jesus Christ as the second Adam. When the Bible presents God in action, it always does so in an accommodated analysis. For this reason, it is essential the days of creation in Genesis 1 be interpreted in terms. Thank you so very much.